one of the, I have never stayed through a conference whole day. This is the first, first time actually I have stayed through the conference the whole day. Just shows the sheer value add you are bringing to this uh, discussion, uh, which t truly reflects the depth and, the, and, and something. I, I really feel proud being an ODIA today. And thanks for that. Uh, one of the questions I always get, how did the central bank governor of Singapore decide to pick a ODIA to run the strategic interest? Today, I really understand why. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure if he was here, I'll not be selected. Somebody would have got the job. So, so that truly shows the talent we have, and we got to find a way to showcase it. Uh, with that, uh, there's something common between Odia people and Singaporeans. We are both worried about our future. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You're still worried about your future. Singapore is a very affluent country, and they're very much worried about the next 50 years. We have a lot of other things in Odisha. We are also worried about our future. And, uh, and the starting point to understand the future is through public dialogue. I think there's a strong common strategy to do that. I'm very happy that Invest, Invest Bhuvneshwar started the process by having a public dialogue. And that's the, perhaps the best way, rather forming a com committee or subcommittees and subcommittees and white paper, that doesn't work. It only worked through a dialogue process. So, so I, I actually had a, I, I had a prepared speech, but as I was progressing through the day, I decided to let it go. Because uh, uh, the morning started with Mr. Bakshi talking about Singapore, so I am done with that. So I'm not going to talk about Singapore anymore. Uh, I had some idea, but all the speakers took away. So I'm left with very, very few options, uh, which is good. I'll be staying within my time. So I, I took some notes as I was hearing all of you, and I'll share some of those. Uh, hopefully, it will be some value to all of you. Mr. Bakshi talk, talked about Singapore as a benchmark. Uh, if, I, I'm sorry he's not here. He would, have he would have defended that position. But I don't believe we should copy Singapore. I really don't believe we should co copy Singapore because we are different set of people, we have different set of ecosystem because there are different reasons for us to succeed. Monetary success is not the only success you should look for. And today I truly believe we have far more happiness and far more different ways to look at life rather than trying to grow wealth. I think Singapore model is good. There are certain strong points, but we should not replicate blindly. But there are some truth in Singapore which we should try to look forward to. That is called trust. The rule of the law. People don't break law in Singapore, period. I attended a marriage, very dear friend of mine, uh, two weeks back. I hope he's not in this crowd. Uh, he wanted to come. Uh, but I really love him. Uh, and the, and there's a law in Puri that you cannot burn crackers after 10, 10 p.m., I guess. And he was very worried. And it happened, they started burning crackers after 10. And after this entire thing is done, there's a lot of pride that we are the first one to break the law. I think that was a badge of honor that you could do something historic, uh, which nobody done in Puri. I think that's something we got to change. We have to follow the law. There's no better way for us to grow than by, by, by not following the law. And the rule of the law is the most important thing. I, I almost travel most of the time outside Singapore. 50% of my year is somewhere in some country traveling. I never get worried about my family in Singapore. I think that's big, big factor for the talent in Singapore to think about Singapore because we don't spend time in worrying about day-to-day -day life, uh, about my family, my children, my, 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 my in-laws who are all staying with me. We don't think about those issues. Our mind is completely focused in doing something meaningful rather than worried about the social structure, the issues, and the trust in the system. So we got to find a way to make our state a safe place to live and work. 
let me give you a quick big picture of the global scenario. Globally, everyone is worried. We are not the only people worried in Orissa. There's a shift. There's a shift in the way world economy is moving. People are no more talking about large corporations. The world is shifting to small economies. I think this entire hangover of putting big 1,000 crore announcement of investment has to have some balance. We need small companies. We need small entrepreneurs. Together, we can make a better living. We don't need large corporate capital infrastructure. We need small economy. So let me give you, uh, within my time, something which I think you can take away if you feel valuable to all of you. There are many ways to, to drive opportunities, but we cannot do everything. We have to take some of the opportunities a calculated bets. Because if you try to do many things, you'll go nowhere. So this habit of putting a grand plan and trying to deliver doesn't work. It does not work anywhere. So you got to find our strength, pick few bets, go after it, and be mindful that if those bets don't work, change. So there is nothing called long-term strategic view. You have to pick few bets, make a change. As you move along, start, start fixing it. If it doesn't work, fine, move to the next strategy. So the idea of small bets, few bets, is perhaps something you should think about when you are talking about Orissa's future. The good news is that what Bakshit uh, uh, told that we have a huge population of young people. This future is about them. If they can come up and fix this place in some way beyond being nice and happy, uh, I'm, I'm sure we have a long way to go. So let me give you a few policy uh, suggestions, if I can, to, 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 to see how we can construct our grand future vision for Odisha. First and foremost, trust. So what can we do to make our trust better apart from respecting law? Law is very basic. You have got to get it, get it right. Can we develop a vibrant ecosystem? And I want to use the word ecosystem with some responsibility. We cannot have progress discussing strategy in Bhumanishwar. It has to be a dialogue with districts, small town, villages, in the language all of us understand. Inclusive dialogue is the best way to start to build a true ecosystem. We don't do that. <laughs> we got to find a language which, which is inclusive in nature. When I go to a small village, they should be saying the same thing what we in Bhubaneswar are talking. If they don't talk the same language, we are not going to go anywhere. When I started my own journey as the public officer in Singapore government to run the strategic fintech, which is part of the 50-year plan, the first thing I did was to develop an ecosystem. It's something I can talk to my investors, something I can talk to my politicians, something I can talk to my bosses, something to the, to the small stu entrepreneurs, the students, the, the hinterland people in Singapore, if it is a hinterland. Uh, but the idea is to bring an inclusive dialogue with everybody participating in this discussion. Create public structures, private structure, maybe use a WhatsApp, they're so simple, no need to talk, no need to create an association, just create a simple group, maybe some electronic way to connect everybody. There are people in villages who perhaps have far better idea than what we have here. So find a way to go and tap that potential. And if you can get it out, there's a better chance to succeed. I think that's where the success lies. Build a connected ecosystem, all-inclusive strategy that will work in the long run. The second idea, if I want to leave with all of you, start moving from job seeker to job creator. I remember it's hard, it's hard to get married if you're a businessman in, in, Ori in Orissa. I, I, and I don't know it's still there, but when I was growing up, I used to get, if you can't do anything, you'll become a businessman. That's a bad, that's a bad way to think. 
Every developed economy has come from people who have created jobs, not people who have seeked for jobs. We got to get our, over that culture. We get to get our best people to build businesses. That's the only way we can succeed. If <laughs> Parents here or senior citizens here, please, if one thing you want to take away, tell your grandchildren and children, I don't know what your age is, uh, create jobs. Don't look for jobs. Don't go look for job in TCS, Infosys, World Bank, or whatever it is. Go and tell them if they're capable, build companies, build small businesses. Doesn't matter what size it is. Create, start creating new jobs. That's the way you're going to develop a true sustainable growth in the, in the state. So we got to find a way to dip, dip in those capabilities as we go forward. Dip in and expand skill. There's no way without talent you can make it happen. I may be wrong in my statistics, so please excuse me. I, I, I read a report, only 50% of Odisha population actually work. That's a bad statistics. Remaining 50 people just don't do anything. So we got to fix that balance. So yeah, they definitely vote. Uh, that's, a great, uh, that's a great opportunity for somebody. Uh, uh, so we got to find to train people in different skill set. And, and just a little di distraction, I think the, the idea of in, uh, almost forcing people to have creative skills is a must. If you don't put creative skills on people, talent program is not going. So it's not about math and science and all this thing. It's about a combination of balance in the skills development. So skills program is the third thing you've got to think strongly to build a future of Odisha. Uh, the, and I'm from the space of innovation. We got to find a way, and this is where I hold academicians accountable. They are the agent of bringing innovation. If they sit in the university hoping that the papers they're writing is going to bring innovation, bad idea. Step out of your colleges, step out of your university, talk to people, doesn't matter how, what they know, build a system of innovation, build the incubation, build the accelerator. I promise to you, wherever I work, I'll bring the money. I think that's what we do. The last point, deep in emerging market connection. This fascination of talking to US, talking to Europe has to stop. The next big opportunity for growth is going to come from emerging market. That's where the potential is. Build flight connection, build bilateral connection with the ASEAN countries. The next 3.2 trillion growth in GDP is going to come from those countries, not from US, not from Europe. Build connectivity with those countries, build bilateral, cultural, economical, policy making, exchange of ideas build and deepen the relationship with the emerging market. That's the way you get some access to future wealth. If you don't do that, going nowhere. Be disciplined, very important. We just don't have a habit to be disciplined. And, you, and in anything we do, either we're standing and speaking or whatever we do, be disciplined, follow the law, follow the order, 10 minutes if you can. Uh, be humble. One of the things Singapore bureaucrats are known for, extremely humble people. There's no red light on top of them. They are public servant. They are truly servant of public. So that's something we've got to find a way out. <laughs> Aspire big, dream big. In fact, I tweeted uh, Mr. Bakchi's statement. I want to repeat again. Have an ambition, comparison, and a point of no return. That's perhaps the best wisdom I got today. Thank you very much.